Um, all right, so I'm Sagar Karandakar. Uh, I'm an undergrad uh, in the Aspire Lab. Um, I'll be talking to you today a little bit about the structure of the RISC-V stack, and we'll delve a little bit more into kind of the details, how to actually work with all of the tools, um, and kind of the workflows that you're going to uh, use when working with the RISC-V tools. Um, so a brief outline of what I'm going to talk about. So first, we're going to go through, uh, kind of review what Andrew talked about yesterday. So the targets, compilers, kernels, um, and the two main usage flows that you'll deal with when working with the software. Um, then I'll give you a, a, an overview of what's in the RISC-V tools repo. So that's our main repo that houses all of our production-ready tools. Um, then we'll talk about cross-compiling a C program for RISC-V. Uh, we'll run programs on Spike using the proxy kernel. Um, then we'll step through building RISC-V Linux, um, running programs with QMU on top of Linux. Um, and then I'll briefly talk about some uh, other, other RISC-V software tools um, that are not part of RISC-V tools, but that you might find useful. Um, so just a meta note about the talk. So there's not really any time to wait for a lot of the compiles to happen. So uh, that kind of material will just be in the slides, and I'll talk through it. Um, but anything I actually type into the console on the left, you can actually follow along with in your uh, virtual machine. Um, and if you get stuck with anything, there's uh, lab time from 3 to 5 p.m. Um, all right, so to jump right in, uh, our target software machines. So we have uh, three out of Berkeley. Uh, the first is called Angel. So this is more just a, a system that's easy to use. It's designed more for outreach and education. So you can go try that out at risk5.org slash angel. I'm not going to talk much about it today, uh, but you can go watch it boot Linux. Um, then we have Spike, which, uh, which is our golden, golden standard uh, kind of ISA uh, simulator. Um, and then we have QMU, which is our high speed port, uh, which is our port of the high speed jitting uh, simulator that you probably know about already. Um, we have two compilers. We have GCC uh, and LLVM. Um, so we have two versions of each of these. So 4.6 was our uh, old version uh, with the following the old ABI. Uh, a couple days ago, you probably saw Yunsup's email um, about the release of the 4.9 toolchain. Um, so the names of the compilers and the tools here follow the standard triplet of CPU dash vendor uh, dash OS. So when you're using these in the VM, they'll be called something like RISC 564 unknown Linux GNU GCC um, and things like that. Uh, there's also LLVM. I'm not going to talk too much about that today. We're mainly going to be focused on working with uh, GCC with Newlib and GCC with glibc running on top of Linux. Um, so like I said, there, we also have two standard libraries. So we have Newlib that works with the proxy kernel um, and glibc, which will run on top of a Linux type system. Um, all right, so we have two kernels. And this is kind of how they fit into uh, the RISC-V vision for the privileged um, specification. So uh, the, some terminology, supervisor execution environment, and application execution environment. So in our case, something like QMU or Spike can provide the supervisor execu execution environment. Um, if you're running on top of proxy kernel with the front end server, um, both of which I'll talk about in a second, uh, you have kind of ABI access, or, or the ABI interface. Um, if you're running on top of Linux, Linux will provide the ABI um, and SBI. So there are two main usage patterns that you'll deal with when working with these tools. So if you're working with small programs that you're developing for an embedded systems type application, if you want to run it on a, a simulator uh, that's simulating hardware, uh, so you want to keep kind of the cycle count low, um, you're going to use uh, the RISC-V unknown ELF GCC toolchain, which is going to work against new lib. Um, you'll run the proxy kernel. Um, and in our case, since we're dealing just with the software side, we'll run that on top of Spike, um, the ISA simulator. Um, on the other hand, if you want uh, to run programs that need a full-blown operating system, um, you can compile them with RISC-564 unknown Linux GNU GCC, which will link against glibc. Um, you'll run that on top of the Linux kernel. Um, and we can run that in Spike or QEMU. Today, just so that you get a taste of all the different tools, we'll run that on top of QEMU. Um, OK, so RISC-V tools is our big repo that contains all of our production-ready tools, or tools uh, that we are, we're ready to release um, it's available on GitHub under the UCB bar organization uh, called RISC-V Tools. Uh, build status is monitored with Travis CI, so you can always see uh, to make sure that the tools are passing and everything's working correctly um, on our builds. Um, it's pre-installed on your virtual machine, so like I said, compiling and installing this will take quite a bit of time, so we've done that for you um, on the images we've given you. If you're interested in installing this on your own system, um, it's also available, uh, ins installation instructions are available in the same repo, and you can easily install it on OSX using Homebrew. Um, and we'd be happy to help you install it on your own system um, during the lab time. This is a, an overview of what's in RISC-V tools. So 
Um, these are all the submodules in that repository. So first we have uh, the RISC-V front end server. Um, so the goal of, of this piece of software is essentially to uh, facilitate communication between some host machine and a RISC-V target machine. Um, then we have RISC-V GNU toolchain, which provides GCC and all of its friends from binutils. Um, then we have RISC-V ISA sim, so this is also called spike, so at the command line you'll type spike, not RISC-V ISA sim. Um, and this is a golden reference ISA simulator, so we'll use this today to run programs on top of proxy kernel. Um, then we have LLVM, which I'm kind of just gonna brush over. It's another compiler uh, that you're probably familiar with, but we're not gonna use it today. Uh, we also have PK, which is the proxy kernel, a lightweight kernel that proxy system calls out to the host operating system. Uh, then we also have uh, QMU, which is our port of the fast ISA simulator. Um, we have RISC-V tests, which Steven will talk about in a later talk. Um, and also RISC-V Linux, it's in parentheses because it's not actually in RISC-V tools because the build process is a little more complicated. Um, but it's, it's another repo that you can find under the UCB bar organization and I'll talk about the actual build process today. Um, and a lot of it is now automated as part of Pokey, uh, which Martin will also talk about um, in, in a little bit. Okay, so Fezver, the front end server, uh, like I said, the goal is to facilitate communication between a RISC-V host, uh, or sorry, a host machine and a RISC-V target. Um, so it does things like L floating, kind of the, the general bootstrapping process. It also simulates some basic devices um, over the HDIF bus. Um, it, you'll see it used on FPGA development boards, it's called Fezver Zinc there. Um, also with test chips and spike. Um, so a lot of these slides will have a little where to begin uh, component on them. So these are, this is what you can actually type in in the command line on your VM to get started. Um, so on the software side, uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see spike in a couple of slides. Um, if you're working on an FPGA board, you can type fezverzinc h to see uh, what the options are there. Um, okay, so the proxy kernel, like I said, this is a lightweight kernel. Um, it's designed essentially so that any syscalls it can't handle directly, it's going to send out to a host operating system for, for handling, so things like opening a file. Um, and so this works with Fezver to provide an application binary interface and an application execution environment. Um, you'll, you can find the binary, uh, the RISC-V ELF binary, um, on your virtual machine in that directory, um, and I'll show you an object dump in a little bit if we have time. Um, and the way to use it is essentially you type spike PK in the binary, so the first argument to PK um, is the name of the, of the binary you want to execute, um, and we'll actually do that in the VM in a couple minutes. Okay, so uh, check, a brief review of the host target interface. So it's a non-standard Berkeley extension, so it's not really part of the ISA, but you can see it defined in various places in the code I and mean, on the following slide. So it provides a non-blocking FIFO interface um, to communicate non-zero values. Um, in RISC-V64 implementations, uh, you'll find two 64-bit communication registers from host and to host. Um, so as you might expect, from host lets you receive uh, information from the host machine and to host is how the RISC-V target is gonna communicate to the outside world. Um, there are a bunch of existing driver and device combos available here. Um, there's console, block devices, um, and some new networking support. So uh, this, is, uh, this is kind of small, I guess, on the, on the slides, but to look, take a look at how HDIF works. Um, here we're actually looking at the front end syscall code inside of proxy kernel. Um, so you'll notice that when a syscall is issued, uh, you get the syscall number and all of the arguments passed in. Um, and so what's going on here is we're essentially filling up uh, a buffer with all of our arguments. Um, we're gonna take that address and we're gonna write it to two host. You'll, you'll see this write CSR function call. Um, so we're taking that address, putting it into the two host register so that the host uh, knows where to grab the syscall number and all the arguments from. Um, then we're gonna spin on the from host register until the value is non-zero, indicating that uh, the, the proxy, or that the front end server has done some work and we'll see the front end uh, server code on the next slide. Um, and then we, once, once we break out of this while loop, we know that the syscall has been handled um, and we move on to return. So this code is inside proxy kernel and you can check that out in frontend.c. This is just to give you a taste of how hdiff works. Um, okay, so now in the front end server, so this is kind of the corresponding code um, on the other side. So this runs on the host machine. Um, we, have, uh, we have the dispatch function, so essentially what's, what's getting passed in here is that magic mem address um, that, the, that the proxy kernel sent out. Um, and so here you'll notice that we're pulling out um, that chunk of memory, we're reading out uh, those values and we're calling the corresponding uh, handler for that syscall, and then we write that information back into the magic mem so that the, um, so that the target machine knows uh, that we've handled the syscall.
And this code is inside the front end server, and you can check that out in syscall.cc. All right, so the next uh, piece of software inside RISC-V tools is RISC-V ISA sim, also called Spike. So like I said, it's a golden reference functional simulator. Um, it does either full system emulation or the proxied emulation using uh, the front end server and proxy kernel. Um, it also supports things like single stepping, uh, viewing register memory contents, all that good debugging stuff that Albert will talk about in the next talk. Um, and you can configure it to have a variable amount of memory and CPUs, um, all that good stuff. Um, it can provide the software execution, uh, supervisor execution environment or application execution environment based on whether you use proxy kernel um, or something like Linux. Um, and you can start at the command line by typing spike-h and we'll actually try it out um, in a couple of slides. Okay, so QMU is our uh, fast full system jitting RV64 simulator. Um, you can't use this with PK, so this just does uh, full system OS simulation. Like, so you need to boot something like Linux on top of it. Um, it's currently the fastest RISC-V implementation, so runs uh, about uh, above a little bit above one BIPs. Um, and so device support, there's an 8250 UART for the console. Uh, you can use VertIO disk networking, um, all of those devices. And also, also supports HTIF disk. So there are two ways to use QMU, which I'll show you at the very end. Um, but you can either use it using kind of purely existing devices like the, H, uh, use, like the 8250 UART and VertIO, or you can also use it with a mix of HTIF and that 8250 UART for your console. Um, this is also used extensively in Open Embedded, which Martin will talk about later. Um, and if you want to get started at the command line, this is also pre-installed on your virtual machine as QMU System Risk 5 um, and you can run that, and we'll also do that once we finish building Linux. Okay, so on your own machine, uh, you'll want to follow these steps to install the tool chain. So like I said, uh, this is on the UCB bar organization. You want to clone that repo. Um, you want to update, do git submodule update init recursive so that you pull in all the submodules of the submodules and so on. Um, the big thing you want to do is set this RISC-V environment variable. So this will tell the tool chain where to place um, all, of the, all of the things it builds. Um, then you want to put RISC-V slash bin on your path so you have access to all the tools. Um, and you're going to run the build script, and this is going to install almost all of the tools that you see um, in that repo automatically. So, like I said, this is going to take a while, so all of this stuff is pre-installed on your virtual machine. Um, and so once you follow this process, you'll get all of these nice tools um, installed. So you have some, uh, some Fezver components, uh, QMU here, um, all of the GNU toolchain pieces, um, and Spike also down here. Okay, so next thing we're going to do uh, is actually learn to cross-compile a program. So there are two paths that we're going to follow here, like I said. Um, so the first is to run RISC-V64 unknown ELF GCC, which is going to produce code that we're going to use with PK to run on top of Spike. Um, and then our other option is to use RISC-V64 unknown Linux GNU GCC, uh, which we're going to run on top of the Linux kernel. Um, okay, so uh, first, the, the kind of easiest way to do this um, is to run on top of the proxy kernel. So um, what we're going to do here, you can actually do this in your VM. Um, so we, I have this hello.c program over here. Um, as you'd expect, it just prints hello RISC-V bootcamp. Um, so what we can do here um, is we're going to run RISC-V 64 unknown elf GCC and then dash o hello hello.c. Um, and you'll notice it produced uh, this hello binary. And we can also do risc 64 unknown elf object dump dash d hello hello dump. And we can take a look at the code it produced. So here's our, here's our nice risc 5 assembly. So that's what we just produced by running the compiler. So this is designed to run against the proxy kernel. So we have this binary now, hello. Um, and we can run it on top of the proxy kernel on spike by typing spike. PK to indicate that we're using the proxy kernel. So that's the, that's the binary, we're passing in, binary we're passing into spike. Um, and then we can run hello, and we get our output hello RISC-V bootcamp. So that's how you're going to run programs on top of spike. So the general idea is that you want to use the RISC-V64 unknown ELF GCC compiler, right, as opposed to the RISC-V unknown Linux GNU GCC. Um, and you can just run directly on top of spike by feeding in the proxy kernel, and then as your first argument, the binary that you want to run followed by any arguments to your binary. Okay, so uh, the next thing we want to do is actually run programs on QMU on top of Linux. So before that, we need to actually build Linux. So again, this process has already been done on your VM since we don't want you to waste time actually following all of these steps. Um, so I'm just going to breeze through the steps, um, and then I'll ask you to join in with me again once we actually compile our own program, dump it in the root image, and then run it on top of QMU. 
Um, okay, so our, our, the, first, the couple of steps we're gonna follow to actually do this. Um, first, we need to build our Linux cross-compiler. Um, then we're gonna build the Linux kernel, build a dynamically linked copy of BusyBox, and then create our root uh, disk image that contains all the libraries and things we need. Um, so the rest of this tutorial is assuming we have a directory called top, um, which has the RISC-V tools cloned into it. Um, and you can find all of this later on. We'll post the slides online and also uh, in the RISC-V tools readme. So, uh, so you can try it out later. Okay, so first we're gonna build RISC-V Linux GCC. It's not actually called this anymore, but the name doesn't fit on the top of the slide. So, uh, so we're calling it that for now. Um, but the basic idea is that we have this directory called sysroot that we need to populate with uh, things like libraries that we want to copy into our root disk image so that we can actually run programs um, inside uh, on our Linux, uh, on our copy of Linux. Um, so this is luckily handled almost automatically now by the compiler. Um, and all of these files will be located in $RISC-V slash sysroot64. So if you type echo $RISC-V um, on your VM, you'll see which directory it's pointing to. And all the shared libraries that we're gonna need are, are located in RISC-V slash sysroot64 slash lib. All right, so uh, inside of top and your clone of RISC-V tools, you're gonna go into the RISC-V GNU toolchain directory, um, and we're gonna configure and compile. So when we configure, we need to pass it the dollar sign RISC-V directory um, as, uh, as, as the prefix so that it knows where to dump all of the files it generates. And then we're gonna type make Linux. So if you're building just the, the new lib versions of these tools, you would just type make. Here you're typing make Linux so that we build the Linux cross compiler. So this is gonna dump RISC-V 64 unknown Linux GNU GCC um, and all of its friends in RISC-V slash bin. Um, and it's gonna populate the sysroot64 directory with all the stuff we need to dump in our uh, root disk image. Um, and all this stuff will all, all already be in the path in your virtual machine, so you could even now run this to compile a program, and we'll do that in a couple of steps. So like I said, all of this good stuff, which you can't read, uh, is in RISC-V bin now, so it's all of the uh, Linux cross-compiler and the tools that go along with it. And we have a bunch of shared libraries now in sysroot64 slash lib. Okay, so now that we have the cross-compiler built up, we're actually gonna build the Linux kernel. Um, so what we're doing here is we're building for QEMU, so we're not gonna use the master branch of RISC-V Linux. Um, we're gonna use the QEMU core dump demo branch, which is also public. Um, and so this branch just uses a different set of devices than Spike expects for QEMU compatibility. Um, so what we're gonna do to start is we're gonna just pull the Linux upstream sources for uh, 3.14.15. Um, then we're gonna overlay on top of that all of the RISC-V specific changes. Um, so we're going to add this repo. So again, in the UCV bar GitHub organization, it's called RISC-V Linux. And we're gonna check out the QMU core dump demo branch um, that has all the right configurations for QMU. Then we're going to set up the right default configuration for RISC-V and all the QMU devices. Uh, you can customize it if you want by running this and going through the menu interface. Um, and then we're gonna build by typing make arch equals RISC-V, and this will give you a VM Linux image that will pass into QMU to actually run programs. Um, next thing we want is a copy of BusyBox. So Pokey, uh, which Martin will talk about in a little bit, will get you a much nicer set of tools, but just to build our basic image, we're gonna use BusyBox to get init and an ash prompt. Um, so we're gonna go back to our top directory, we're gonna pull the BusyBox sources so we can just build it purely from source. Um, we're gonna use the recommended configuration that's on the RISC-V website that you can grab if you want. Um, make menu config to make any changes uh, you'd like, and then we're gonna type make, and this is gonna give us the BusyBox binary that we're gonna copy into our root disk image um, in a little bit. Okay, so next thing we wanna do is actually produce, uh, produce our root disk image. So we're gonna create an empty image, um, and then we're gonna format it as ext2. Um, now what we wanna do is we wanna mount this disk image so that we can actually dump all the right files into it. Um, so we're gonna create a bunch of required directories. Then we're gonna copy in that BusyBox binary we built, um, drop it in, uh, we're gonna drop that in bin, and then we're gonna symlink it to be, uh, to be the init. We're gonna copy the init tab off the RISC-V website. You can take a look at that um, by going to that URL if you'd like. Um, and then we're gonna copy in those shared libraries I was talking about earlier um, so that we can actually run our programs against them. Okay, and then finally we can copy in any programs that we compile ourselves. So uh, we're calling RISC-V 64 unknown Linux GNU GCC on hello.c. We can copy that into the root disk image and then go ahead and unmount it. Um, and then now that we have VM Linux and we have a root.bin disk image, we can actually go ahead and run on QMU. So these are the build steps you would follow if you were installing QMU on your own machine. 
Um, this would be done automatically for you if you install the risk uh, install from the risk five tools the repository. Um, then we're going to go ahead and actually boot up. So you, you can call QMU system risk five. As the kernel, we're going to pass in that VM Linux image. Um, and as our root file system, we're going to pass in root.bin. And we're going to give it the no graphic flag so it runs purely at console. Um, so then it'll boot up Linux and you can run your binary. So uh, we can actually try this out on our VM. So uh, we're going to take that same hello.c and we're going to run risk 5 64 unknown Linux GNU GCC. So this is going to compile against glibc. We're going to produce hello Linux um, and hello.c. We'll pass that in. Um, so now just, just to show you, if we try this on spike, it's not going to work. So as you'd expect, uh, it, it, it's not going to run there. So we need to copy it into our disk image, and we're going to run it on top of QEMU. So if we go into Linux QEMU, uh, we want to do, we want to mount that disk image. So sudo mount dash o loop, and then we're going to do root.bin. And we already have a mount directory here, so we're going to mount it in there. Uh, password is risk5. And now if we go into mount, so this is a pre-populated uh, root image that you can find in this same directory on your VM. So it's the Linux-QEMU directory. Um, and so we already have a hello Linux in here, so let's get rid of that. Oops, we need sudo. Sudo. Okay, so we're going to get rid of that. We'll copy in the one we just compiled. So we have hello Linux. Uh, we'll copy that in here. Um, and now we have that binary inside of our root disk image, so we can go ahead and unmount this. Um, now, so now you'll notice we have root.bin and VM Linux in this directory, so this will be in the same place on your virtual machine. So we can do QMU system risk five dash kernel VM Linux dash HDA root.bin, and then we'll pass in no graphic. And then it booted up Linux here, so we see our binary here, and we can go ahead and run that, and we get the output we'd expect. So uh, this is a rather bare bones uh, disk image, um, but you'll learn with Pokey to actually build kind of more, more full featured images with lots of programs. Um, we have a compiler that runs inside QMU directly uh, natively, um, so you don't have to do all this copying back and forth, but just, just for demo purposes, uh, we've got a program running now on top of Linux on QEMU. So we can go ahead and exit, control AX to kill QEMU. Um, and let's return to the slides. All right, so that was one way of running QMU. So there we were working with uh, using the UART console and HTIF disk support. So it's the same disk support you see inside of Spike. The, the other option is to avoid using HTIF. Uh, you can use the 8250 UART console along with a VertIO disk and VertIO networking support. So in this case, you would build QMU. So this is not the default that comes with RISC-V tools. But in this case, if you want to use it like this, you'd build QMU by passing in the disable HDIF flag uh, when you're configuring it, and then you do make and make install. Um, and there's a long, really long boot command that you can pass in to set up all the right devices for VertIO. Um, but luckily, uh, the open embedded system will automate all of this for you using a very nice script to start up QMU with the disk image you build there. So you can see the open embedded talk for, uh, for more about running QMU this way. Okay, uh, so very briefly, just some other RISC-V software tools. So we have a C++ R RTL simulation that comes from Chisel. Um, so Chisel will take your hardware description um, and generate C++ code that'll actually simulate the hardware. Um, of course, if you're only really interested in software development, um, this might not be the best thing to use. Of course, it's going to be slower because it's simulating all of the details of the actual piece of hardware. Um, and then there's also Angel, which is mostly a demo. You can go to risk5.org slash angel, uh, watch it boot Linux. All right. So, uh, in case you have questions, we can answer them during the lab time from 3 to 5 p.m. today. I'm not sure how much time we have left right now. Uh, but, yeah, uh, so that's it.